So hello everyone, my name is Cathy. I work for Volunteering Matters. We've been working with Barclays to create some um, employability and personal development resources and this one is for I will. Hi, my name is Ranju and uh, I'm a customer service um, colleague for Barclays. We just um, day-to-day help customers with their services including all the Barclays products. Hello there, my name is Saida and I do exactly the same as Ranji. I work for Barclays um, and I'm customer service advisor. My name's James. I am a customer care manager in Barclays. I work for Smart Investor. So that's, I look after a team of specialists who help customers with their investment decisions. So today we're going to be talking about the growth mindset. And the aim of this session is to introduce the idea of a growth mindset and to emphasise why it's important sometimes to develop the growth mindset and to use it, um, helping you to make progress and sort of investigate new directions in life and and take the, the, make the most of opportunities that you get. Uh, but also from a personal point of view, to develop your resilience, your self-esteem, general well-being. Uh, let's start with James. What What do you think is the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset? What's the key thing that you take away? It's it, it's absolutely a great question, Cathy. And and you know, one I've I've reflected on quite a bit is just about having a good degree of self-awareness. And the ability just to understand and appreciate where you're at at any given moment. For me, it's just about that ability to, as I said, reflect, create a bit of a plan or a, a an objective, and then just set some clear goals and objectives to work towards that. But knowing that, quite simply, you don't have all the answers, and that is absolutely okay. For me, I think with growth mindset and fixed mindset, it's just the way we we believe in ourselves. It's the way we can um, shape our um, how, how we shape our abilities. It's just about believing in yourself, really. I think. Would you like to give an example of of when you've personally had to use a a growth mindset, or you've been aware of a fixed mindset? For for, for fixed mindset, for me, it is temporary. If you have set goal, you have to achieve this by this time. So for example, I just recently got um, passed with my driving test. So um, I had my my mindset that I will have to pass my test within first attempt. I don't want to do any more attempts. I have to work harder enough to pass it in one go. So I, I planned it accordingly. And on the day of the test, I just stayed calm and I just got through it in the first attempt. Was driving something that you were be a little bit anxious about or you felt pressured about? It's a funny part. Um, I actually know how to drive, but not in this country. So uh, um, I used to drive in a different country. But when I moved here, um, I wasn't able to because I didn't have the UK license. It is difficult for the person who, who already knows a driving in a different country because you need to learn the rules, which is fine by me. But I just, I just had to make I mean turn my head head around with these rules from where I come there's no rules just go ahead <laughs> so, so when yeah. you have a bit of a growth mindset but, but when you were sort of planning when you were making your plans to, to pass your test to sort of think well okay you know I know I've actually done this already and it's a bit annoying that I have to learn all these new rules and stuff but if I don't put that effort in then I'm not going to get all the benefits from doing it yeah exactly yes yes in, initially, when I started with as a customer service, um, I I had a bit of a struggle. Uh, there's three tests basically uh, which we need to pass to get along with the customer services. I just struggled. I failed, and I I just tracked what was wrong and what was right. So I made a definite plan what needs to be done and how I need to achieve it. And uh, eventually, after time, I I just passed my test. And it was a really good achievement because I, I was completely new and I was adapt. I was just still in the time where I was adapting new uh, work environment, but I did it. So, yeah. It's a not giving up and not not being disheartened when you when you don't get something first time. And like you said, developing those strategies like taking on some more training talking to colleagues you know all, all those things that that you yeah think. and just consistently working on that um never giving up that's 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 it yeah but i'll give an example of when 
I sort of um, I believe that this is part of fixed mindset. So when I was younger, I learned how to read Arabic, and that was that was all to it. I just learned how to read it, but understanding the meaning behind what I'm reading, I I have still from to today I don't know what it is. Um, so I was really nervous, and actually I I wouldn't go out of my way to actually find out what I was learning, what they meant, because I was just nervous. I didn't know what to do or how to go about it. And I thought, you know what, let's not just go on my way, I just stay. I've learned how to read it, that's fine. And then recently there came an opportunity where you could um, join this uh, this course where you can learn what you're reading. Um, and instantly I was like, you know what, I've stopped myself for all this time. Let's just give it a try. And I didn't think anything of it, I had no plannings or nothing. I just went straight into it. And that's my fixed mindset that I want to learn. I want to know what I'm learning. Like, I want to know what I'm reading. So that's a part of my fixed mindset. I've got my goal that I'm going to achieve that. But there is no planning to win. I don't know what, what to expect in this road. So there are a lot of barriers and there are this and that. But I'm just, I'm just stuck to it. I'm like, I'm going to do this. Whether I will complete it or not, I still don't know yet. It is a big journey. Um, so I would class as my fixed mindset that that's the goal that I want to achieve. I think um, you've, got, um, you've got you've got both in there. I think you've got, got the, yeah yeah sort of initially that what you were saying you know you just thought well I I can read it out loud that's fine yeah. that's all I need to do yeah and feeling a bit nervous or kind of daunted by yes. taking it any further would mm-hmm. be kind of your fixed mindset yes saying well actually I don't want mm-hmm. to look stupid in front of other people I don't mm-hmm. you know I, I don't think I can do this or I'm not sure yeah. I can do it. But then the growth mindset will say, actually, someone's offering me this opportunity and it Let's would be it. really interesting if, yeah. if I could do this. Uh-huh. And then sort of opening up that possibility. So have you started yes. the course? I have started the course, but, you know, it, it requires you to be able to read the, the letters, the words, yeah. and then understand it. And that's where I'm struggling. I don't want to do that. So we haven't come to that part yet because it just, it's still teaching us the basics. So yeah. when it comes to that point, I'm always like, oh, do I have to do it? Do I have to do it? So I haven't done it yet. So that would be a fixed mindset that I'm not ready to actually, you know, I'm just scared that what if I get it wrong? What if the, my Arabic isn't right? Or what if it's, I haven't said it, pronounced it properly? Yeah. So I do step back there. Yeah. And I think that's that's natural. I think everybody does that. Nobody has, you know, is like supremely confident in every situation. Yeah. And it, yes. you do have to kind of if it I mean you don't have to push yourself to do it. It's yes. just uh-huh. if you if the outcome of it, if the possible end result of it is worth yes. kind of making yourself a little bit vulnerable like that, then the more you do things yeah. like that, the better you kind of feel about yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I've got my qualification as a teacher. Teacher, um, before that, I would find it difficult to speak out in front of public. Um, I found it difficult to stand up and just present anything. Like when I was in college, I just wouldn't stand up. I'd get, I'd do the PowerPoint and everything, but I'd make my friend do the the standing up and actually presenting. Um, I used to start sweating and whatnot. So that was really hard for me. And then going into teaching, that was a big step because I knew that that would require that's your requirement. You'll have to stand in front of everyone. You would have to present. Not just to kids, but even in front of the head teacher, your mentor, everyone, um, which I was again very nervous of. Um, I, I'm pretty sure my first, my first, very, my first ever time I had to stand in front of someone, I was shaking, and then I had told my mentor, "Look, I find this really difficult. Can we do like a practice before we actually? I have to actually present in front of the head teachers." And they're like, "Yeah, yeah, that's fine." So what he did was we did um, a shared, um, a shared presentation. I was fine in front of the children, but when it came to the head teachers and everything, that well, that's when I would get really nervous. So you guys do one thing. We'll do a shared one where I'll do the first part and then you just jump in whenever you feel comfortable. So we did that as a practice. And then he, at the end, it came to a point where he's like, do you want to start off? And then I'd start off and then I'll just continue and I'll end the session and didn't realise that it was that simple. But it took a lot to for me to grow out of that. And it took me a few attempts of having different mentors and head teachers supervising me and just um, examining the way I present in order for me to actually get used to it. That's a really good example. So and and one of the big things that I take away from that is that you had someone to help you. I did, yes. And and that's always important. You need that support. Really important. And you know, most people want to help. 
so you know asking for help is a really is a really a really good step what 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 were the benefits that you got once you felt a bit more confident in speaking in public how did that help you the biggest one I felt good about myself because I was never able to do that all the way through school all the way through college and university and the fact that I've managed to do that in this degree I felt good about myself um out of it I got my teaching de degree so I'm a qualified teacher so everything was a win-win to be fair I thought I would just start with uh, an example for growth mindset about two months ago I had decided to start a Brazilian jiu-jitsu class now I have never done martial arts in my life I am very aware that there are lots of techniques um, that I simply do not know and people that are much more skilled and experienced than me uh, practice this, you know, four, five, six, seven times a week. Um, and normally I would get really nervous and start to, to stress out about how that would make me feel. But I just listened to a few podcasts about it, um, like Joe Rogan and James Smith, the personal trainer, who were, were such big advocates of what, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu does mentally for, for you and it was something definitely that I was lacking I think during the Covid pandemic I've put on a bit of weight and I was really conscious of that I've got a young family who I want to be fit and healthy for and it was just uh, something that I know that I would really really enjoy doing so rather than getting worked up and, and stressed out about it I just knew that go along, you know, experience the class and, and just get a feel for what it is. And, you know, I was just really surprised at how welcoming everybody has been. You know, there's um, there's not just one type of person that goes, you know, it's not just all guys. There's a mixture of, um, you know, all, all gender types that, that go to the class. Um, and everybody's just so accommodating and, and you know, trustworthy. They, they really appreciate the fact that, you know, I'm, I'm still new, I'm, I'm still learning and I don't have a good idea of, of what I'm doing. Um, and what that's done for me mentally is just, you know, give me a, a fresh outlook that it's, it is absolutely, as I said earlier on, OK to, to not know all the answers. That's that's the enjoyment that I find from it. And it's just good to be able to test myself in a situation that I'm completely unfamiliar with. You know, there's people that, that are half the size of me that could bend me and put me into shapes and, and grips that I don't know what to do in. Um, and irrespective of my size, you know, and, and, and my own strength, I need to understand the technique and how to do it. Um, so it's about remaining calm in that situation, you know, being really in control of my breathing and, and accepting that I'm, I'm going to get tapped out at some points as well. Um, and I just, I, I just love it. You know, I'm I'm such a big fan of it and I would promote it to anybody now to, to go along and um just experience it. Really, really good. What I, I've got from that is you you took on a challenge, you took on something for a reason, you know, that you, you wanted to get fitter and, and, and healthier and you know, be kind of fit for your for your family and, and all the rest of it. But out of it you get a whole but if you stick with it and kind of don't get put off by your own kind of concerns about not being the best and not having all the answers you get all those other benefits that you weren't expecting like meeting lots of different people and kind of being part of a, a new kind of community and absolutely in new ways yep 100 percent, and it's it's just so rewarding kathy um you know that the community side of it is is really good but also that the simple fact that it's okay to say that you don't know and you know people people will put you into a, a grip or a hold or a technique and you you need to tap out it's, yeah. it's all done it's all done with you know respect and trust and no one gives ever out their way to kind of hurt you so it's just all the the feelings that you would get you know about being unsafe or, or worrying that you could get hurt None of that exists because of the environment and the community that, that exists behind that. I had something similar, which was during lockdown. Normally, um, I sing in a choir and obviously we couldn't, you know, for the best part of two years, we, we couldn't. And I was just really missing. I, I, did, I was just bored and missing kind of kind of contact with people and doing something as part of a group. 
And so I um, I was kind of looking for things that I could do online in an evening just for just, you know, to kind of keep my mind occupied and do something different. And um, I saw there was a um, an online art class. And so I said, well, I hadn't done any art since I was at school and I wasn't particularly good at it at school either. But I just thought I need to do something. So first session I was looking at all these other people who'd been doing this class for a long time and I just thought they're brilliant and I was really embarrassed at what I was producing and I just couldn't I, I, I was really reluctant to share what I was what I was doing and after the first session I was thinking oh, I'm not sure about this you know I look really stupid and, over and then I got a, a message that they had a kind of whatsapp group where they shared um the work that they've been doing during the sessions and I got really nice comments on what I put on there you know like that's a really good start you know for you know and that's really playful and I love the colours and all this sort of thing anyway long story short I'm still doing it kind of 18 months in um, and I've got you know new friends out of it and a new sort of creative outlet and so it's just this, that as James said that overcoming that feeling of not being particularly good at something, not knowing all about something. Um, and once you overcome that, not only can you become better at the thing, but you also get all those side benefits as well. So that's my example. So what we wanted to, to do next is just to have a think about how um, people watching this video, what they might be able to do in order to, well, A, to develop a, a growth mindset and B, what they want to do with that growth mindset so if we just have a, a bit of a discussion first around how you think you develop that growth mindset how do you how do you develop that way of thinking that makes you able to face those challenges and, and take them on so I've, I've mentioned reflecting quite quite a bit through our discussion today um and you know i'm i'm okay to admit that mentally at times I've I've not been the strongest over over my life um and I've really found that reflecting and writing down you know what 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 some people would call journaling um has been really really beneficial for me so I I'd now look to embrace um what some people would say is failures or or things that I'm I'm not as good at just to understand you know wh where I'm at and then to give me an idea of is that something that I want to change you know I'm a happy staying where I'm at just now um, and it's all just about increasing my self-awareness and, and understanding my effectiveness of, of what I do now I've, I've got a really really challenging and demanding job um, that I had no experience in you know like like three and a half years ago when, when I first joined Barclays never worked in, in the banking industry before and I now manage a team of specialists um, with some really quite complicated um, investment processes um, and that was that was really daunting for me you know I, I found that it was really out of my own kind of comfort zone um, but I knew what I was really good at and that is engaging and, and talking to people supporting people and, and helping them grow and develop and, and that's um, transferable you know across any any group or any organization but what I what I knew that I had to learn was the the, the technical side of it you know understanding the the processes the terminology um, you know what the key the key terms were what what we offered um, and I couldn't do that overnight and it, it could have been really really overwhelming for me um, but all I did was, you know, start to make a, a journal, you know, and a list of what I wanted to learn. And then I would just work backwards. You know, my, my outcome was I wanted to learn it and understand it. But then I would just look at well, what am I missing and then what do I need to do to get there? Um, and that is at times asking for help, you know, saying to somebody who is a bit more qualified or a bit more developed to say, listen, I, I really don't get this. Can you talk me through it? Can you can you explain to me um, what that means and how you get there? And just you know, being open to that, but being um, aware of of what I needed to do, and not being afraid to ask for help has made all the difference for me. 
And I just find in any set of circumstances or any situation, if you're willing enough to reflect, take a bit of ownership and ask for help, um, then as we've discussed today, then nothing will ever be a problem. One of the things I take from that is the self-awareness is kind of being aware of your strengths and also of areas where perhaps you do need to learn and develop. But yep. importantly, being realistic about that, because I think quite a lot of us have, if not imposter syndrome, then we tend to sort of talk ourselves down a little bit and say, oh, no, I, ca I can't. Yeah. Oh, so I can do that. So that will have people nodding mm -hmm. heads. Randy, does that um, ring bells for you? <laughs> Definitely, the always first of all thing negative. I'm not sure about everyone else here, but I always just uh, demotivate my, motivate myself first. Uh, no, you can't do it in the first place. And then um, um, in the second instance, I'm like, no, actually, you can do anything you want. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I just nodded my head. <laughs> If you think about doing something daunting, well, I, I get, if I think about doing something daunting, I get this feeling in the pit of my stomach. And then if you yeah. kind of rationalise what that feeling is, the feeling is, I'm not up to this. I can't do it. I'm not good yeah. enough. Just yeah. breathe. <laughs> yeah. And actually be rational and say, well, actually, I've done something similar. Yeah. Or, you know, well, I didn't use, like in your case, I didn't used to be able to to speak in front of people but I can now so I can probably do this as well yeah so yeah. Ranji did you have a, a, a an idea around what you do to develop your growth mindset what how would you strengthen that so um in order for me to keep myself motivated um what I normally do is I um just look for a set goal first and um, I know that the path is not going to be smooth. Um, it's not going to be as easy as just just doing it like that in a in a in a in a second or a minute or an hour. It it'll take time for me to grow in this um, whatever I'm achieving in. I don't have any example at the moment, but I'll just set my goals and work gradually on it. And um, I, I know there will be times I'll be. I'll I'll have meltdown. No, I can't do it. It's too hard for me. But I would have to gather myself together and pick myself up to do that. So it's it's quite many. I don't have any example at the moment, but it had had happened to me many times. But I just gather myself and gather, gather the courage and confidence to keep on the path, even if I fall. I'll just I'll just get up and work continuously and I have achieved things which I set the goals for so this is what I normally do and if I need to get some help from anyone I will ask for help like James mentioned in her in uh, his uh, thoughts about it I will ask for help I will not hesitate um, in asking for help because people generally want to help you it's just humans who help humans there's no one else for us it's just humans and we will do the mistakes we will always do the mistakes. It's, it's not that we are perfect in every sense. So we will do the mistakes, we'll correct them and we'll learn something new and we'll we'll get confident after that. So yes, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah, and I think I think you're right about setting yourself a goal, which we'll we come back to um in a minute. Um and but what you said about taking it slowly if need be and and what can be really helpful is you might have a goal, which is, I don't know, to get a certain job. But then you break that down into chunk into smaller chunks. Small chunks, yes. Job might seem miles away, but like writing your CV might not be. So mm -hmm. you just build up the steps to make yes. it slightly more manageable. Chocolate. Yeah, one step at a time. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Ranju. Uh, Saida, how about you? I totally agree with um, James when it comes to reflection. I think that is very important, is very key. And again, with, um, you know, your mental health as well, you need to mentally prepare yourself. Um, if you're not going to say, yes, let me give it a try, it won't work. If you just put yourself down by saying, no, um, I can't do this, and that's it, you're just going to stick to that. In order for you to grow, you need to say, yes, I can't do this, but let me give it a try. And actually focus on that and work on that. 
if needs be write down notes or reflection maybe do something or take up something that you find hard and then ask someone to maybe give you some reflection or criticize on how you've done and then from that you shouldn't always look at your good your good stuff or how well you've done in this and that it's important that you take what your weaknesses are even if you fail it's good that you work on those failures then from there you can achieve better because with your failures failure sorry you can try you can be like okay I've got this I know I'm good at this let me work on my weakness and once you've worked on that then that helps you grow and do better um I know I don't always do this but sometimes yes I have um taken reflection upon myself and again agree with James and Randrew there where it is important that you ask people if you don't ask you'll not get the help um that's very important I think that's key because sometimes some people are, are afraid to ask for help they just think oh they might not know or they might not be able to help but if you don't ask no one's going to know what you need help with and they won't be able to help and everybody is willing to help you um I mean we don't no one wants to take anyone down so yeah I mean for an example like I don't can't remember any personal examples of um myself feeling down but there have been occasions where that has happened but I have got a close friend where um he hasn't had a job for the past two years um, he studied at uni but he found it really difficult to find the job that he wanted he had his fixed mindset that he wanted to work in the field that he studied for he wouldn't go elsewhere and um, that's why for two years he wasn't able to find a good job and he had his family who were putting him down a bit because he was the second eldest of the family so they were like oh well how come you still haven't got a job just work anywhere but he was like no I want to find a job in this place I've worked so hard why can't I find a job in this place I want to work in there he had siblings who had found jobs and everything. So it was harder for him because his younger siblings were working and everything. Um, they were independent, but then he was still at home, not finding exactly what he needed to do. And obviously with your, if, because he had family and people just criticizing him, he was like, I'm, 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 I don't see the point of, I don't see the worth of my, myself being in this world or why am I here? Or um, I don't see what I'm worth or every everything whatnot but then I was there I'm like look why do you keep saying that just look at the positives maybe this time while you're wasting your time doing nothing and just criticizing yourself maybe work on something that'll improve maybe apply for more jobs or even just take up a part-time job which will or even just like a do voluntary that will help and it's just you know that boost that boost that you give someone that helps and they're just like you know now that they've got the job they're like oh my gosh I can't I can't thank you enough because you've actually you're the actual so only support there that said okay keep going and um, you'll find something somewhere and I'm happy now and not everybody's happy but it's just there will be people who will want to put you down um but I think it's important that you have the supporters that help you there as well if you keep not getting jobs at interview you need to know why so if you get feedback on you know why you were unsuccessful at an interview it's not the easiest thing to hear but it is the thing that's going to help you change and improve in your future interviews. Does anyone have any goals that they would like to share? Anything that you would like to achieve uh, that you know is going to be a bit of a a bit of an ask? I want to get a little fitter. Uh, I'm not fit at the moment, uh, but I'm trying to take mini steps. So the first step that I've taken is. Um, avoid uh, fried <laughs> and <laughs> processed foods so I've just uh, tried that I'm just uh, it's been a month or more I, or I guess and I've seen a little growth there because I've lost few not I would not say pounds kgs <laughs> I bought <bulk up laughs> in kgs so um that's the first step and my next step would be um actually doing something physically to to keep myself fitter and uh, just burn those calories um and I'm planning to intensify my diet as well because I've just for now I'm I'm just planning my meals like breaking it down instead of having all all the things at once when I'm really hungry I what we as a human normally do is when you're really hungry you just grab everything whatever you see so what I'm doing is I'm just making wise choices by getting fruits or veggies don't look at those processed foods or crisps or chips or whatever I'm just looking <laughs> for veggies and fruits and uh, that's it I'm just doing that for now but I'll intensify my diet and I'll start working out as well so that's my end goal 
and I think you've there's there's some important points in there. One is that you said you're planning your your food. So you're not just, you know, when I get really hungry and then eat everything that you can get your hands on. It's actually making a plan so that you yep. know that, you know, at two o'clock or whatever, you're gonna have whatever. Um, and the other thing is exercise is a really good um kind of example with growth mindset because if yeah. you don't do any exercise you don't go straight from couch to running a marathon you don't I actually do like a bit that. of walking I actually do a bit yeah. of walking but I'm just going to intensify my workout as well but walking is helping but not that much because I just want to achieve something else for that I need to work step. really hard it's a first yeah, step that's it's what first it is step. About. You're not yeah. doing anything and then the next step is maybe jogging or going mm. to the gym or and that's yeah. that's the growth mindset thing is is okay rather than doing nothing you mm. start by doing something and then that will lead on to other things and new opportunities will open out definitely Thanks, anyone else got any goals they'd like to share Mine is exactly the same as Ranju's. I was thinking while she was mentioning that. Um, so there was, I think two months ago, I went to the gym. I saw the gym. I was on a good diet. And then some family circumstances happened and I had to, you know, totally come off it. And now I've pop, gone back to eating junk, um, not watching what I'm eating and no exercise whatsoever. So it's just getting putting with myself in a mindset where I need to start doing that again, um, you know, to be fitter, healthier and just mentally be in a better place. And do you think there are things that you can do? I mean, I'm just I'm thinking about um, what we said about asking for help, you know, that actually mm -hmm. those sorts of things are often easier to do if you've got someone going along the journey with yes. you. Uh -huh. Or and now I've got Ranju, now that I know that Ranju's there, <laughs> I will ask her for help. <laughs> and James, because he has convinced us uh, oh, to, yes, to join uh -huh. that. Yes. <laughs> I, actually have, I actually have a group with my friends where some of them want to lose the weight. They've actually named a fat club because um, we're all fat. So that just motivates us. Like whenever we go on the group, we tell each other what we're having for our meals or how we exercise or not. And then because it's called Fat Club, whenever you, look, whenever you look at it, you're just like, okay, we need to change that to something better. So if we don't make progress, how are we going to change it? So that's a thing that we do um, help each other on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Faida. How about you, James? You've already sort of shared, shared a similar one, haven't you? Anything else that you, you're... Yeah, it's, uh, I've actually thought of a thought of a different goal. The um, this this discussion is is definitely had me thinking about my own mindset, <clears throat> particularly in work recently. Just because there's there's so much going on and it's it's felt particularly re relentless. Um, so I have a really bad fixed mindset at times uh, when it comes to work. I uh, go tunnel vision, I think that I need to do everything five minutes ago and I put myself under a lot of pressure with that and I just know that recently I've not been the best dad to my babies which really upsets me. Um, so I have made a commitment that I am now actively going to ask for more help um, or just to call it out you know when, when I'm feeling a bit more pressure. Um, and I really thought about how I was going to do that as well, um, because I think it's it is easier um, said than done. And I just just thought about it. Um, so I'll just kind of cover off what what I jotted down. So um, again, I'm I'm going to surrender myself to um, open myself up to knowing and accepting that I don't have all the answers or the solutions to the questions that will, will face me each day. Um, and I'm going to welcome the feeling that I don't know that. And at times it will take me um, asking for help um, to get the solution or the answer that I needed. And that is completely natural and it's OK. Um, I'm going to normalise that that feeling um, and understand that by doing it on a consistent basis is what's going to help me improve and generate better outcomes each time. Um, I know that I'm going to make mistakes. I'm going to accept it. And that's also part of my journey. But the main thing is, is that I'm not going to derail myself uh, by feeling bad about it and understanding that there are only a set amount of hours in the day and that I can't encroach on my personal time uh, with my family because that's, that's where I really start to feel it and put myself under pressure. So um, just, just slowing down, 
breathe in, you know, the, the really good points that we've we've discussed today. And I've I've heard Ranju and Saida just, just talk about it out loud. Um I'm I'm taking that away from today and that's that's my goal. Um and also I would encourage anybody to join a jiu-jitsu class. Um it's great. You'll burn about a thousand calories every session. It's really, really good. I'm just gonna go ahead and look for these classes near me. That's I it. will as just well. I will go after I'm off this call. So I'm much fun. <laughs> so, so much fun, guys. Honestly, Re reach no, out to me if you want to talk it through anymore. <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs>